Hello Math 120 class. Um, this is the section 3.1 handout and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with the second page. We did uh, this whole thing in class but um, I think we need to review a little bit on the second and third page. So let's start with the second page. And the second page uh, has three graphing problems and I'm going to do number five. And remember, for all these graphing problems, the instructions will say use the intercepts and the vertex. So uh, let's start with the vertex on number five. The first thing I'm going to do on number five is write it in a different order. f of x is equal to, that's negative, uh, the quantity x plus 2 squared plus 4. Oops, helps if you can see it, huh? Sorry. Okay, and um, now this is in a form where I can just read the vertex off. So over here to the side, I make a little, actually maybe I'll make it over here, you guys can see better, an xy table, and the first point I'm going to list there is my vertex, which will be negative 2, positive 4, because we read that off there. Here's my, where I get negative 2, here's where I get my positive 4. Okay, next, I find my intercept. So let's start by finding the y-intercept, remember to find the y-intercept, you let x be 0, so f of 0 is equal to negative 0 plus 2 squared plus 4, and if you do the math, you get 0. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit. Oh, I guess that's as far as it goes. Okay, sorry. And so 0, 0 is my y-intercept. Okay, so let me plot what I've got. 0, 0 and negative 2, positive 4, okay. Now I know that this parabola opens downward since the leading coefficient, or a, is negative. And now I need to find my x-intercepts. So now remember to find the x-intercepts. Oh, let me pause. Okay, now we were finding our uh, x-intercepts. And to find our x-intercepts, we let y be 0, or another way to say it is we take our function and we say it equals 0. And then we solve. So I'll get 4 is equal to the quantity x plus 2 squared. When you take the square root of both sides, here I'm going to scoot over here to do the work, I'll get plus or minus 2 is equal to x plus 2. So that tells me that x plus 2 equals 2 or x plus 2 equals negative 2. When you solve this you get x equals 0. Now that's not a surprise since I already got 0, 0 and x equals negative 4. And those are, 0, 0 is already there, negative 4, 0 is my other x-intercept. So negative 4, 0 is here. And it opens downward, so I just connect the point that I have, making a lovely parabola. Okay, so that's number 5. Now let's do number 6. Number 6, um, this time, to find my vertex, this is not in standard form, I can't just read the vertex off. I have to use the cool little formula where the x coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. And so if I do the math on that, I get um, positive 4 over negative 2. So x is negative 2. Now if you have an x, how do you find the y? You plug it back in. So we will need to find f of negative 2. So when I plug that in, I'm going to do some of the math in my head, so forgive me. I'm going to get negative 4 plus 8 plus 5, which is going to give me 9. Okay, negative 2, 9. Now let's find the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, you let x be 0. And this one's easy. If you let x be 0, y will be 5. And now let's find the x-intercepts, okay, so I need more space for that. So I take negative x squared minus 4x plus 5 equals 0. I don't like to factor things with negative leading coefficients, so I'm going to multiply through by negative 1, and I get x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. Factor, and I get two x values of negative 5 and positive 1. So those are my two x-intercepts, negative 5, 0, positive 1, 0. So let's plot all the points we've got. 
negative 2, 9, oops, 9's here, 0, 5, helps if I graph correctly, 0, 5, uh, 1, 0, and negative 5, 0. There we go, those four points. And now I connect them. This is a parabola that opens downward because the leading coefficient is negative 1. And there we go. So now I think that, now be careful on number 7. I think you guys can finish number 7. But the first thing I would do is write it in descending order of power, or the polite way, as we say. So that is x squared minus 2x minus 3. And now go from there. Find the vertex, find the y-intercept, find the x-intercepts. Okay. The next one, we will do the word problems. Okay, now let's do some word problems. Starting with number 10 from the section 3.1 handout. <clears throat> uh, you may not be able to read this on the video, but just print out the handout. So it says a rectangular playground is to be fenced off and divided in two by another fence parallel to one side of the playground. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is draw a picture. So I have a rectangular playground, and it's going to be divided in two uh, and by another fence, so it's going to look something like that. Okay, it didn't say equal, just said divided in two. And this side, this uh, division is parallel to one of the sides. All right, 720 feet of fencing is used. Find the maximum area of the playground. Anytime we're doing a minimum or maximum problem, we're looking at a quadratic equation and looking for the vertex. Okay, so let's label some sides here. I'm going to call the short sides the width and the long sides lengths. Okay, so I let W equal width. I let L equal length. And I'm going to write the first equation that occurs to me, which is the one that has to do with fencing. There's 720 feet of fencing, so I know that 3w plus 2l equals 720. Okay. Then the next equation that occurs to me is find the maximum area. Area is length times width. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my equation that has to do with fencing solve for either L or W, and substitute it into the area, and this will become a function. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, I think I'll solve for, I guess, L. What the heck? So, let's see if you guys believe me. You should get L. Now I'm skipping steps, so be careful. Oh, except that would be wrong. Okay. L is equal to 720 minus 3W all over 2. Okay, so L would be equal to 360 minus 3 halves W. All right, now I'm going to substitute, and I get that the area is equal to 360 minus 3 halves W times W. Now let's distribute and write it in the correct order. When I multiply the w times this negative 3 halves w, that's negative 3 halves w squared, and then I'll have plus 360w. And now I want to find the maximum area. This is a quadratic function. I know the graph would be a parabola that opens downward, so the maximum occurs at the vertex. So this time I know the W I'm interested in is negative B over 2A. Because this time W is the input variable. So the W that we want is negative 360 over 2 times negative 3 halves. And when you simplify that, you get 120. That's feet. Once you know the width, you can find the area, the maximum area, in two ways. Way one, you take this width of 120 feet and plug it back in to our 
quadratic function here. This is the formula for area, basically. I plug uh, 120 in here and out pops the maximum area. Or I take my 120 feet, I put it back over here, and I figure out what the length is, and I multiply length times width. Um, either way you do it is okay with me. And um, so your sentence should say, the maximum area of the playground is, and I don't know what it is, and I don't have my answer key. Well, I guess it's a mystery. So you guys have to finish this one in uh, on your own.